So, the history of that song is an entirely other story because a lot of those rhymes were stolen from uh, another rapper who doesn't really get the credit uh, for, uh, for actually having written that song, but that's a whole other issue. The point is that uh, despite the authenticity of uh, the rhymes, it was a popular song. It, it did well uh, for radio stations and despite the fact that the song itself is at least 10 minutes in length, uh, most songs on the radio are about four minutes long, they let the whole thing play and it spawned hip hop music for the masses. Uh, most people in the New York City area, particularly the Bronx and Harlem, were familiar with hip hop in the early 1970s. But after this record was released in 1979, it began a worldwide phenomenon. Um, everyone wanted to jump on uh, the bandwagon of uh, hip hop and, and create records. Uh, prior to 1979, it wasn't the purpose of um, rappers or practitioners of hip hop to create, mu uh, to create albums, to create uh, songs. Uh, it was something done for fun in the parks and at parties, uh, just for the enjoyment uh, of the party, uh, just for the pleasure of creation. And uh, after the success of this record, the goal became making a record and making money and becoming famous and performing the songs live in concerts uh, and in concert venues throughout the world. Another one of the predominant legacies of hip hop culture is uh, that it provides what I like to call slice of life narratives. Um, this is a way of explaining that uh, in any given rap song, you're getting the perspective of the rapper who's rhyming. Uh, the United States is a huge country and rappers from different areas of the country are explaining to you their individual perspectives from uh, where they come from. Uh, if you are a rapper by the name of Kanye West, for example, you're giving the perspective of someone who uh, is from a middle class family, whose mother was a doctor, who uh, has certain experiences based on uh, attending college. Uh, I believe his first two albums are entitled The College Dropout and Late Registration. And uh, his third album, I believe, is even called Graduation. And uh, it's all about the ex is middle class existence of uh, an African American who is from a semi-affluent background and uh, attends college, et cetera, or drops out, as the case may be. Uh, Jay-Z is another very popular rapper who provides the perspective of someone who uh, once sold drugs to his community and changed his mind about that and decided to use his uh, abilities as a hustler in another legal means, uh, in his case, the music industry itself. And uh, that is not the experience of every African-American, obviously, but uh, every uh, uh, segment of the black community is represented by a certain rapper. Uh, there are so many, so many rap albums and so many different rappers, and they're all providing the different perspectives of uh, where they come from. Uh, even someone like Eminem, for example, who's an extremely popular rapper who is not black, but is poor and from a poor background in Detroit is uh, sharing his experiences of what it's like and what he has in common with other uh, actually black artists and black hip hop uh, recording artists that uh, are from a, s a similar financial, you know, socioeconomic background as, uh, as he hails from. So uh, all these different perspectives can be found in hip hop culture and this is uh, one of the great things about the music that separates it from rock and roll, for example, or uh, jazz or blues, uh, that uh, by listening to it, you're uh, sharing the 
worldview or the perspective of the person who is creating the album and who's creating the music. Uh, if you have no idea what life is like for, for someone who lives in California and uh, used to belong to a gang, you can put on your headphones and listen to Snoop Dogg for an hour and have some kind of uh, understanding of his mentality and what drove him to uh, join a gang and, and uh, maybe he came from a fatherless home, etc. Uh, and on the same token, you can listen to a group like A Tribe Called Quest, for example, a, a popular group from the 1990s, and understand what it's like to uh, come from a, a bohemian uh, perspective. So hip-hop, it fosters a, a greater understanding uh, in terms of uh, learning what life is like for someone who has a completely different set of experiences than you. It's, it's uh, extremely unique to the music. Uh, going back to the quote that I, I uh, read from earlier from the book, uh, people from the hip-hop generation, and being 39, born in 1970, I consider myself uh, to be of the first generation that was able to take hip-hop for granted as a culture. Uh, we were able to be ourselves more so than perhaps the previous generation was able to. Uh, it's a very entrepreneurial generation that I belong to. We feel almost uh, some sort of entitlement to be able to create uh, companies uh, and uh, wear what we want to wear and, and have the image that we want to project rather than putting on a suit and a tie and working to build someone else's company, we can wear our jeans and our sneakers and create our own companies. And uh, it's uh, probably a byproduct of being the first generation that was able to take the civil rights movement for granted and uh, the laws that were signed in the late 1960s that allowed certain things to come about for African Americans were, uh, were taken for granted by my generation we felt that anything was possible in that in that sense uh and we went ahead and we we created uh these these uh these music publications and and these record companies and uh uh clothing companies etc so uh all of these things i guess go to the greatness of of the culture it has its uh setbacks uh, drawbacks as I'm about to get into, but um, these are the positives of hip hop culture. <sighs> Six years ago, I wrote this book because I felt as though the culture were, was in trouble, as if it were uh, possibly dying on its last legs. Uh, part of what led me to believe this to be true was uh, that there was a lack of creativity in the music. Uh, maybe a decline in the originality of the music. I'm going to play two songs back to back uh, for you now that maybe prove this point a bit. Uh, I mentioned earlier that Rapper's Delight is the first rap song that was very popular, released in 1979. It is 10 minutes long, and that's long for radio stations generally. Uh, the following song is probably about the same length, and uh, it's hard to understand. Uh, I made this point <laughs> yesterday, last night, uh, I gave this, uh, ah, and I think the same thing happened <laughs> at the exact same time. <laughs> Thank you. Merci. Uh, <laughs> so, this song that I'm about to play is probably eight minutes long at least. It's very hard to understand because the rappers are talking very fast. Uh, I am a hip hop expert, just having been a fan of the music my entire life and having seen hip hop culture grow outside of my window in the South Bronx. And I have trouble understanding uh, <laughs> what these rappers are, are saying. Uh, 